What is the best lens to pick during cataract surgery? The lens that you choose for cataract surgery is really going to set your vision up for the rest of your life. Today's video, we're going to go through the best lenses in 2025 to get you the best results during cataract surgery. We'll talk about the different zones of vision you can aim for during cataract surgery, the different categories or types of lenses to choose from, and we're even going to get down to the specific lenses that are available, including a couple new lenses that are really exciting that were just FDA approved going into 2025. So if you or a loved one is getting ready for cataract surgery in 2025, this is the video to watch. This is going to let you know what lens you should choose to get the results you want for your vision. Before we jump into it, my name is Brad Sifrig. I'm a board certified cataract surgeon. This is the Cataract Companion YouTube channel. It's a channel I made to help answer questions about cataract surgery to make patients more confident so they can get their best result. With that, let's jump into it. So real quick, cataract surgery is a procedure where we remove the clouded natural lens from your eye. That's what a cataract is, and we replace it with a clear artificial lens. Now in 2025, there's a lot of different lenses available to choose from, and those different lenses can do different things for your vision, like get you in focus for far, for up close, or give you a range of vision. The lens that you choose during cataract surgery typically will be very stable for the rest of your life. It's really important to pick the right lens for your vision goals the first time around because it's a one-time opportunity to set your vision up for the rest of your life. Now before we talk about the different lens types, it's important to understand what I consider the three different visual zones that you can aim for during cataract surgery. So the first is your distance vision. And when I say distance vision, it means anything that's further than about arm's length away. So this is the vision that you're gonna use when you're watching TV, when you're driving the car, when you're doing activities outside, or generally your distance vision is what you're using when you're getting around the neighborhood or getting around the house. The next zone of vision is your intermediate vision. Now, intermediate vision is actually right about at that arm's length. Intermediate vision is the vision you're using when you're working on the computer screen or looking at the dashboard in a car. The third zone of vision is your near vision. Now, this one makes sense. That's your vision up close, pretty much everything arm's length and in. This is what you use when you're reading, when you're looking at your phone or looking at a menu in a restaurant. So keep those visual zones in mind. They're gonna come up over and over again as we start to get into the different lenses. Now, generally speaking, there's really two types of cataract surgery you can have. You can have basic cataract surgery. Basic cataract surgery or traditional is manual. It's done by hand. It uses a single range or monofocal lens. And that's the only type of surgery that insurance or Medicare will cover. With basic cataract surgery, the main goal is to improve your vision when you're wearing your glasses or when you're wearing your contacts. The goal of basic cataract surgery is not to get you out of the glasses or contacts. There's also premium cataract surgery. Premium cataract surgery may be done manually or it may be done with a laser, but it always involves correcting astigmatism. It also may involve the use of an advanced or premium intraocular lens. This includes lenses like toric lenses, multifocal lenses, or extended depth of focus, or EDOF lenses. The goal of premium cataract surgery is to improve your vision, but also to make you less reliant on glasses or contacts after surgery. Some portions of premium cataract surgery continue to be covered by insurance, but there's always gonna be some additional out-of-pocket cost to either pay for the use of the laser or to pay for the use of those premium or specialty lenses. Now, you heard me just mention the term astigmatism, and that's a big point of confusion during cataract surgery. This video isn't gonna be a deep dive on astigmatism in cataract surgery. I actually already made a video that explains astigmatism in cataract surgery, so check that out if you're still confused. But quickly, astigmatism relates to the shape of the eye. It's a condition where your eye is a little bit steeper going one way and flatter going the other. Basically, what you need to know is that astigmatism causes blur at all ranges of vision. Astigmatism can be corrected by glasses, contacts, or it can be corrected at the time of cataract surgery to give you better vision when you're not wearing your glasses. I highly recommend correcting astigmatism during cataract surgery. It's a serious no-brainer to me. There's almost no downside to it. And to find out more reasons why, check out that video on astigmatism and cataract surgery. I'll go into it there. During cataract surgery, if you have a small amount of astigmatism, it can be corrected with the use of a laser, making some relaxing openings on the very front of the eye. If you have a medium to high amount of astigmatism, we actually have to put that astigmatism correction into the lens. That's what a toric lens is. It's an astigmatism correcting lens. With a lot of that background out of the way now, let's jump into the different lens types. 
So to make things simpler, we'll bucket our different lens types into four categories. So first is our single range monofocal lenses. Second, we have our single range toric monofocal lenses. Third, we have our extended range lenses. And fourth are some other unique lenses that don't really fit into the other categories. So starting first with our single range monofocal lenses, this is a lens that can get you good vision in one range of vision. You can choose to aim for your distance, intermediate, or near vision. Most patients choose to aim for their distance vision. Some patients who have always been nearsighted or able to see up close may choose to keep that near vision and aim for the close vision. However, the majority of patients do choose to aim for the distance vision. Now, if you have some astigmatism that's not corrected at the time of cataract surgery, you'll still need glasses for all three zones of vision. If you fully correct the astigmatism using something like the laser, then it should give you good vision in one range, knowing you'll need glasses for the other two. Now, the single range monofocal lens is the only type of lens that's covered by insurance or Medicare. Every other type of lens we're gonna talk about is gonna have some additional out-of-pocket cost if you choose it for cataract surgery. Now, as you can see, there's a lot of different lenses that fall into this category. Some of the more commonly used ones in the United States include the Alcon Clarion lens and the Johnson & Johnson Technus lenses. Now, with these single-range monofocal lenses, as expected, you can see well at one range of vision, whether you choose to aim for your distance vision or for your near vision. How well you see without glasses in that range will be determined by how much astigmatism you have. If you correct the astigmatism or if you have little to no astigmatism, then you should see well at that one range without glasses, but you'll still need glasses for the other two zones of vision. Now these single range lenses prioritize all of the light into that one zone of vision. So really, if you're aiming to get your absolute best quality distance vision, then the single range lens is what's gonna give you that best quality distance vision. The trade-off with this is because it's prioritizing quality over quantity of vision, you'll have very little range of vision. If you aim for the distance vision with a single range monofocal lens, you're absolutely gonna need glasses for everything arms lengthen in for that intermediate and near zone. That's because these lenses don't provide much range of vision at all, it's very minimal. Now, when looking at visual side effects, all lenses can cause some halo or glare or sometimes some nighttime symptoms, but these single range monofocal lenses cause the least amount of those nighttime symptoms. Now, before we go any further in the video, I do wanna mention that I've actually made a digital copy of this lens guide. If you go down to the video description and click the link that's there, you can have that copy sent to your email. It's a great form to have to reference during the video or to reference back to after you've watched the video if you wanna look back at something in the future. Our second category of lens is our single range toric monofocal lens. Now, very similar to that last category we talked about, this is a single range lens, meaning you have to choose to aim for either your far or your close vision. Again, most patients aim for their distance vision. As mentioned earlier in the video, these toric lenses have astigmatism correction built into the lens. If you have a medium to high amount of astigmatism and you wanna correct it at the time of cataract surgery, a toric lens is the way to do that. Since you're fully correcting the astigmatism with that toric lens, you can expect to see well in that zone of vision that you aim for. If you aim for your far vision, you should have good far vision without glasses, just needing them for up close. Vice versa, if you aim for your close vision, you should have good near vision, but you'll need glasses when you're looking at a distance. Again, most of the major US manufacturers make these toric lenses with the Clarion and Technus being some of the most common ones that I see in practice. Similar to the non-toric version of the single range lens, these lenses are gonna have really great quality distance vision. They're gonna have minimal nighttime or visual side effects, but they come with the cost of not having much range to the vision. Really, you get very minimal range at all. That leads us to our next category of lenses, which is our extended range lenses. In contrast to our single range lenses, an extended range lens can get you a good range of vision where you're seeing far, but also seeing some up close without needing glasses. Now there's really two main subtypes of extended range lenses, and we're gonna talk about both of them. The first is a multifocal lens, and the second subcategory is an extended depth of focus, or EDOF lens. Now, before we jump into the specifics of these two categories, I do wanna highlight that an extended range lens is different from something called monovision. So monovision is a setup where you can have one eye for far and one for up close to get some range of vision when you're using both eyes together. Extended range lenses are different. 
Each eye is individually getting a range of vision where both eyes are seeing far, intermediate, and some up close. So our first subcategory of extended range lenses is our multifocal lenses. Now multifocal lenses give you the most range of vision. With a multifocal lens, you can expect to have good far vision, good arm's length computer vision, and good up close reading vision as well. Really, most patients with multifocal lenses don't need glasses hardly at all, including reading glasses, with the exception of sometimes for very small or pill bottle print, they may still need a small pair of readers. As you can see, there's a lot of multifocal lenses on the market now, including some new additions to the market that we're really excited about. In the past, I've used a lot of panoptics lenses and a lot of synergy lenses with great results. Patients very happy with that range of vision. These multifocal lenses, as you can see, have rings on the lens, and those rings split the light to give that range of vision. Now, as with anything in life, there's no free lunch. To get that increased quantity of vision or that increased range of vision, you do give up a little bit of the quality of the vision. You also will have more side effects with your vision, particularly with your nighttime vision, where you should expect to see some halo or glare around lights at night. Most patients notice those side effects. It's only a small percent of patients that are actually bothered by them. As with anything, your brain gets used to them and tunes them out with time. Now, all of the advances with these multifocal lenses are situations where they're trying to minimize some of those trade-offs, where you're keeping that great range of vision without having as many side effects or without having reduction in the quality of your vision. On that note, there's a couple new additions to the market that look really exciting. The Odyssey lens has just been approved by Johnson & Johnson and is starting to roll out at the end of 2024 and into 2025. I personally have just started putting these lenses in eyes and have seen some really happy patients. There's also the Envy IOL, which is made by Bosch & Lom, which is the newest multifocal to be FDA approved and should be rolling out in 2025. Now, as we discussed, the benefit of these multifocal lenses is that really you can expect to have that full range of vision without needing glasses. Looking at the distance vision, you do give up some quality of the distance vision to get that quantity or that range of vision. Your distance vision won't be quite as good as it would be if you did a single range lens. However, considering you have a cataract going in, depending on how bad that cataract is, there's a good chance your distance vision is going to be better after the surgery than it was before even if you choose one of these multifocal lenses. As mentioned, these multifocal lenses have the most and the best range of vision that we can currently get during cataract surgery. However, they do come with the trade-off of having some of those nighttime side effects like halo and glare. You should expect to have some of that in your vision. If you think it's gonna really bother you, I would not recommend a multifocal lens. Now, our second category of extended range lenses is our extended depth of focus, our EDOF lenses. EDOF lenses give some range of vision. With an EDOF lens, you can expect to have good far vision, good arm's length computer vision, and some up close vision, although you should still expect to need reading glasses for smaller print up close. EDOF lenses have slightly less range of vision than multifocal lenses, but they come with the benefit of having less side effects and less reduction in the quality of your vision. Compared to a multifocal lens, you get slightly less range of vision, but slightly better quality of vision. There's only two FDA approved EDOF lenses, the Vividi and Synergy lens, both of which have been around for a few years. These are some of my most commonly implanted lenses because they give a great range of vision without having too many side effects. There's some other lenses like the Ihance and the Aspire lens that sometimes are called EDOF lenses. Now, technically, these lenses were not approved as EDOF lenses, Studies show they do give some range of vision, but not quite as much as the FDA approved EDOF lenses. They probably belong somewhere between the single and extended range categories as an in-between. With EDOF lenses, as mentioned, you can expect good far vision, good computer arm length, and some close vision, knowing you'll still need readers some of the time for up close. The distance vision quality is better than a multifocal and slightly less than a single range lens. The range of vision is intermediate, not quite as much as a multifocal, but definitely considerably more than a monofocal lens. And there's less visual side effects than with a multifocal lens, probably a little bit more than with a monofocal lens, but typically not too much. EDOF lenses can be a great option if you want some range of vision without having too many visual side effects coming with it. And finally, jumping into our fourth category, which is really just a catch-all, other unique lenses. These are some lenses that are very unique compared to whatever else is out there. 
and really deserve a category of their own. The first lens to mention is the IC8 Aptera lens. Now this lens, as you can see, actually has a pinhole built into the optic on the lens so that you're looking through a pinhole with your vision. If you've ever been at an eye doctor and they're testing your vision and then they flip those little holes in front of you and all of a sudden things are much more clear, well that's the effect that this lens has on the vision. Now that pinhole can give a little bit of a range of vision, probably somewhere close to what an EDOF lens gets. It also can be particularly useful in patients who have irregularly shaped eyes, like patients who've had RK in the past, or patients who have keratoconus, because that pinhole kind of offsets some of the negative effects of those conditions. And the last lens to talk about in this category is the light adjustable lens. Now this lens has been out for a couple years now. It's been getting a lot of buzz nationally and for good reason. The light adjustable lens is unique compared to all other lenses for cataract surgery in that it can be adjusted after the surgery if it needs to be to fine tune the vision. Traditionally with cataract surgery, at the preoperative appointments, we take a lot of measurements of the shape and size of your eye. And from those measurements, we determine what strength of lens to put in the eye. If we're aiming for your distance vision during cataract surgery, then we're trying to get your eye to be very close to having zero prescription. Our calculations nowadays are actually very accurate. We can get there about 80 to 90% of the time, but about 10 to 20% of the time, for whatever reason, people's eyes don't follow averages and there can still be a little bit of prescription left. With the light adjustable lens, if that's the case, the lens can then be adjusted to account for that little bit of prescription to fine tune or fine focus the vision. This lens can be an especially great option in patients where those calculations aren't quite as accurate for their eye. That includes patients who've had LASIK, PRK, RK, or any type of refractive surgery in the past. Previous refractive surgery makes our traditional calculations we do for cataract surgery a little bit less accurate. So I hope this video has been helpful, giving you a breakdown of the different lenses during cataract surgery, how you can think about them and approach them. If you haven't already, scroll down to the video description and click that link to have a hard copy of this lens guide sent to your email for free. And make sure to go over to the channel page. There you'll find a playlist of frequently asked questions. In this playlist, there's dozens of frequently asked questions about cataract surgery. There's short questions with short specific answers. If you have a specific question about cataract surgery, there's a good chance I may have already answered it there. While you're on the channel page, make sure to subscribe. This is the Cataract Companion channel where my only goal is to help you get your best cataract surgery result. I'll see you next time.